How the heck do you price your product or service? Today, that's what we're going to be talking about. This is brought to you by this discussion, this topic, this episode by you guys on Marco Polo. There's been some really great conversations there. I highly recommend you get on there and just be part of the community of listeners. It's mostly you guys talking, asking questions, answering questions, throwing out ideas, throwing out topics. It's fantastic. The link is in the show notes. Go check it out. It's absolutely free. And it's just a great way for you to be on camera or if you want just to watch people be on camera and get in on this discussions. It's no longer a one way communication, but we can communicate back and forth. You can also email me, of course, Matt at howtobuildatent.com or find me on all of the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. Really appreciate you guys subscribing, liking, thumbs up, subbing on YouTube. And also going over to the Fight Laugh Fees Network. That's where we're part of, flfnetwork.com. Put an HGBT in the member field, get that sweet mug and tons of other great content. But most of all, proclaiming the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life. All right, let's talk about pricing. Now, one of the things that you need to understand about pricing, and this might be one of the most important, is that... Your price is part of your brand. And if you have a price for a brand that is extremely low and your brand is for a high premium product, then people are not going to really believe that you have a high premium product. They're going to start associating you with a cheaper product and vice versa. If you have a really cheap product and you price it really high, well, people are going to be really confused and not understand why your cheap product is priced so high because that's where a luxury brand is, a high-end brand is gonna be. And what you decide to go with is not wrong or right. Being cheap is not wrong or right. Being expensive is not wrong or right. But it, it needs to fit within your brand. And if your price does not match the quality of your product, the brand image that you are portraying, then it is wrong. But just being a high end or low end product in and of itself is not something that is wrong. Price portrays value. It gives off the image, a perception of value, either a cheap value or a high value, high quality, low quality. That's what your price is conveying. So part of what your price is giving out is a message of what your product or service is and who you are as a brand. So that is the one thing that you really need to nail down. The second thing, it goes back to demand. That is, demand is made up of two elements, the willingness and the ability to buy. And this uh, really comes to pricing in most aspects. Now, there's the marketing aspect to it. There is the utility of it, the usefulness of the product or service, what is needed. But price is not only impacting directly the ability to buy, it is a lot harder to buy a Lamborghini than it is a Toyota Corolla. It's a lot harder to buy a Rolls Royce than a Honda Civic. And so the demand for both of those are extremely different. The value and the quality of a Mercedes Benz or a Rolls Royce, a Bentley, a Lamborghini, BMW is a lot different than a Civic, Corolla, and those low end cars, and neither of them are wrong. They're going after two different customers. And that's something you need to think about as well. And when that price goes up, the demand is going to go down because in large part, the ability to buy is going to diminish. And also price affects the second point as well, is the willingness to buy. You need to have the ability and you need to have the willingness to buy. And this is the secret of what, or this is the point that you really need to, I don't know if it's a secret or not. If you don't know it, then I guess it's a secret. This is the point that you really need to focus on if two things. One, your price is higher than everybody else's or as high as the high-end brands. Or two, it's a completely new product or service that is not been in the market, that is no one knows about, that people need to be educated on is you need to focus your marketing, your messaging, and all of your external facing content, media, brand imaging, all that stuff to be convincing people 
that they want to buy your product. The willingness needs to be there because the demand is going to shrink with a higher price or it's gonna be harder and fewer and fewer people, fewer people are gonna be in your demographic the higher the price goes or your target customer because less people can afford higher prices than when there's lower prices. But also then, so the people that can and are able to buy it, you need to market to them so that they are willing to buy it as well. And so when you are seeing products that are high end versus products that are low end, well, usually the high end products have a lot more costs that go into it, not just into the specific product, but also into the marketing, the messaging, the, pro the promotions, the publicity and all those things. You have to usually put more money into a high end product than you would a low end product. And something else that you need to think about with these pricing strategies as well is how do you want to make your money? Do you want to make small amount of margins and mass produce things like software where there's a low variable cost? That is for every item you sell, there's not a high variable cost, but it's more fixed costs of programming, developing server space, those kinds. Of, I guess server space can be a variable cost as well, but usually they buy a... It's so negligible in the variable cost part. It's, isn't it usually an overhead? I can't remember off the top of my head. Or is it something where you want to sell fewer but have higher margins? And that's something else you need to think about on an industry by industry basis, by product uh, basis and service perspective as well. Like for example, as a consultant, independent consultant, you don't want to be so cheap that everybody wants you. You want to be at a place where it's, reflective of your experience and the value you can you can um you can give which is part of the willingness of this demand of the ability and willingness but also you don't want more business than you can give you want to find a price where you're in demand at the perfect amount of where you can be that is you could only be at one client at a time so if you have three or four clients asking to book you in one day well then maybe you should start raising your prices where only one customer wants you a day, and that shouldn't scare you, because if you can raise your prices by double and get a client every day still, well then that's making twice as much money than if you were half that and had four people wanting you, but you could only pick one client. So that is something you really need to remember as with your price. Now, I was trying to think of examples that um, were high-end products that really portrayed value. And so I don't want you to be scared of pricing yourself. And Josh said this on Marco Polo, like again, I highly recommend you um, check out the app and get in on this. It's a seriously, it's amazing, it's great. I, I can't say enough about it. I have enjoyed listening to you guys. So I'm sure you guys have enjoyed listening to each other as well and asking the questions. But I was thinking about products that are high end because it's tempting to want to price your products at high end, your services at high end, but not all the time you can do it. And so you need to be aware that not only that the higher the price you're gonna charge, the better value and quality you're gonna to have to provide, but you're also going to have to communicate it. And one of the brands that is high end and that does a phenomenal job in all aspects from product to marketing to customer service is Dyson. I have like eight Dyson things in my house. I don't know if it's eight, but it's a lot. And one of the things they have that I don't have, because I don't need it, I'm one of those customers that is not willing to buy this, is their blow dryer. Now, most blow dryers cost like good ones, the ones that like nail salons, or not nail salons, hair salons that girls go to. I, I was doing uh, some research on this. They are like 130 bucks is usually how much they are. I can, they can go up to $200. But like the cheap ones that you buy at Target are 40 bucks. But Dyson's blow dryer, hair dryer, whatever you call it. Again, I'm not a girl, so um, whatever. It's $400. There is no blow dryer besides this Dyson that's $400 by hundreds. I think the other top end ones are in the $200 range. Well, why can Dyson and why does Dyson want to sell a blow dryer for $400? How do they get away with it? A $400 blow dryer. 
Well, it dries your hair. If you have thick, long hair, I guess, it dries it in five minutes opposed to 25, 30 minutes. Well, the value is more than just the hair dryer, isn't it? It's saving you 20, 25 minutes of your day for somebody who has long, flowing, thick, whatever hair. And it's machine focused. So it does, and it's like a machine honed blades or whatever, where they're like all individually made and it doesn't burn your hair, which apparently is another problem with uh, blow drying hair is that you can burn your hair or singe it or whatever. And so they have a product that no one else has. It can save you 25 minutes a morning. It will guarantee not to burn your hair and it'll last forever. You'll never need another one for 400 bucks. Now, they're not in the game of selling millions and millions of those. They're in the game of selling a few at a high margin because they spent the resources and have created the value where they can charge those prices. And they do that with all their vacuums. I mean, their vacuums, their air purifiers, that's what we have. They're fantastic. I'm never going to get another air purifier. I'm never going to get another vacuum, ever. They're the best. And I don't mind paying them. So that's what you need to be thinking about. Do you have something of that value or can you convey it? Can you market it? Do you have the time to educate your customers on the ability to do that? Now, the second thing you want to do is compare prices with your competitor and the competitors, or maybe there is only one so competitor, but plural, singular, it doesn't matter. Especially if this product already exists. I mean, it's a little harder to... Um, if you create a new product to compare it with other competitors, if they don't have the same products as you. Um, but just because it's not the exact same product doesn't mean they're not competitors either. You can have a Mexican restaurant and you're still competing with an Italian restaurant, even though they're not equal, you're still competing with them because the person has the opportunity to go to the Italian place next store or to your Mexican place. So don't think just because the product isn't the same that you don't have another, you don't have a competitor with them. But you want to see what their prices are if it is a product or service that is similar to yours because they've already gone through the free market flow of determining where their products are should be priced at by demand. And usually when there's competition with that, that process has happened, especially if they've been in business for long periods of time. Not just any one company, but you wanna, you wanna sample and focus multiple companies and seeing where they're at. And then you wanna ask yourself, where do you wanna be on that spectrum? Are you gonna be high end, low end, and where are those competitors at? Are you gonna be competing on price? Are you gonna be competing on value, which means your price can be higher? Or are you wanting to compete in the middle range and have a hybrid uh, a hybrid approach, which is can be a little more difficult uh, to do. I would prefer, personally, to be either low end competing on price and scaling multiple products or services out or the high end where I am no, I'm delivering value, quality service and high quality products. The middle, it just seems a little more difficult. I'd rather have the clear, precise differentiation that I have in my mind, but that's just me. And then the other thing you want to consider and we'll close with this is how much does it cost you to make? And this is what Josh was talking about in the Marco Polo. And this is true, that you don't want to start a business, start building products, and realize that you can't sell it for what it's worth for you to make. See, on the other end of the supply and demand curve is the suppliers willing at a certain price to supply that product or service. And if you don't think that you can competitively create or produce or provide a service or product at a price where the market's going and you're not making enough money, then you're not gonna be willing to supply it. So you want to think through that and understand how much your margin is and think through all those costs, the return cost, the damage cost, the cost of you know all of those things where you have to fix it or depending on what the industry is. You want to price all of those things in. You want to be very conservative with how much products are gonna cost. That is, you're gonna, you want to price in the most you think it's gonna cost and then decide if you're willing to do it because it's more than just, oh, I want to sell it for twice as much as I make or three times or four times or whatever it is because maybe no one in the market wants to buy it. So you need to balance those two things out. One, your ability and willingness to provide it at that price and two, 
the ability and a willingness of somebody wanting to buy and sell it. And if those two things align, where you think that you can provide at a price point where people in the market are willing to buy, and you're willing to sell and produce it at that, you got your price. So you need to look at both of those factors. And looking at competitors is one of the great ways to do it. If you are looking at a competitor that, like for example, let's just take the Italian-Mexican example, where you're, you're competing against an Italian restaurant across the street, and you're a Mexican restaurant, well, you need to understand who you are and what you're going after. And again, this is where the low end or high end really is helpful. Are you a higher end store, higher end restaurant than the Italian restaurant? Or are you a lower end? Are you a fast food chain? And then compete and differentiate yourself based on that and price yourself based on that. If you're a higher end sit down restaurant, fine dining more than the Italian place, then maybe you can raise your prices a little bit more than what those Italian places are. If it's a low end, you're just turning it out like a Taco Bell, then you need to have your prices lower than the Italian place. And of course, that's a really simplistic example because there's way more than just you and another restaurant. There's hundreds of them around you. You want to be comparing them to all those places. But that's just a simple comparison and understanding of how you should be pricing and thinking about pricing. If you have any questions, comments, get on Marco Polo or you can email me. Love to hear from you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless. 